are worthy, mighty God. There is no God like unto you. There is no Savior like unto you, mighty Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, you are mighty. You are holy. You are wonderful, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone say with me, he is risen. Hallelujah. Say it, he is risen. I don't know if you really understand the magnitude of that. The Word of God talks to us about it. And it says this, that if the adversary, the devil, even knew what was going to take place, he said he would have tried to have done everything he could do to prevent the death of Jesus Christ. You see, because the Lord is alive and, uh, and forevermore, the adversary is defeated forevermore. Now, we're going to wreck his kingdom this morning. I'm just going to tell you right now, the de- we give the devil too much credit. Amen. We're worshiping the Lord around here. Can I tell you, the Bible tells us the battle is the Lord. Say that with me. The battle is the Lord's. If we would worship more, we would war less. Come on, so I feel a breaking in here today that if some of us would just say hallelujah, if we sang it right here, if we would just begin to magnify the Lord and exalt Him, we would war a whole lot less if we would worship a, a whole lot more. Oh, yes, I want let's worship. Can I tell you, praise is in order this morning. Magnifying the Lord is in order today. I dare you to praise Him. I dare you to magnify Him today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, I feel... My help here this morning. Maybe you're here today and you just feel like uh, the fight is too much. The fight is too great. But can I tell you, why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, quit fighting. Say, stop warring. Tell them, say, stop warring. And start worshiping. Come on, somebody. If we would worship more, we would war less. I can't get that off of my mind right now. If we would worship more, we would war less. I would to God that we'd get that revelation. Because even in the Old Testament, there was times that there was the worshipers that was appointed to go out to battle. They didn't take weapons of warfare as far as you and I would know, swords and guns and spears. All they had was a praise on their lips. They put people in place just to magnify. I'm convinced today I would war a whole lot less if I would worship a whole lot more. Man, I got me something to preach right now. I got something to preach right now, and it ain't even my preach. Turn to your neighbor and say, worship more and war less. Come on, somebody. Do you feel that today? This is the first day of the year. I don't know of another way to start it out but to give my God praise and give Him glory. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. Why don't you turn to your neighbor and say, the devil's fitting to have a bad day. Isn't that something? I like the word fitting. That's a good southern word. Fitting. He's fitting to have a bad day. Well, those of us in here that the adversaries kicked around and stomped on and beat up and beat down, come on, pardon those of us that's excited about what God's doing in our life. You know, the adversaries punched and he's kicked and he's beat and, and, and all those things. But you know what? I just like to say this. I'm still here. I'm still here. Starting a new year out, amen, giving God praise in his house today. How many is glad to be here today on the first day of the year? 
Amen. I read this last night. One of my friends put he, he made a memo. You got social media like crazy, and I like this statement. And I thought, hmm, I'll file that away, maybe use that. He said, uh, I'm not staying up tonight to see the new year in. That's what he said. He said, I'm staying up to make sure this old one goes out. Because I've seen a lot of families this year attacked. One, one particular man told me earlier, he said he told his wife at the beginning of last year, he said, this is going to be the worst year for me. He said, in my life. Little did he know what he was saying because they buried five of their kids on it that year. They had a, a little baby that was attacked with cancer and all kinds of things. He said, well, Brother Healing, and we kind of get, well, you know what? Some things happen. It's life. It's life. But you know what? We can survive these things in him. Amen. We can survive it. And I thank God. You know what? I don't know that I stayed up to see the new year in, but I kind of like what he said. I'm glad that uh, that, that other year's gone. A lot, of, a lot of tests, a lot of trials, a lot of things. You know what? We don't know what this year holds. We don't. I've often said that. People say, I can't wait till the new year gets here. Well, I don't know. You know something I don't know? I don't, we don't know what this year holds. There may be grief and heartache and trials and turmoil and all those things that come with life. But you know what? There's one thing we know. That song that we just sang, he's alive. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's alive. And because he's alive, I'm not going to worry about what this year brings me. I'm not going to worry about what tomorrow brings me because I know he's alive. And because he's alive, amen, great things, great things can take place. Well, I know that. If you're not careful and you're like me, I have not had one bite of food this morning. But uh, my wife, she really doesn't like cooking for me on Sunday morning because she wants me to go in the pulpit hungry where I'll hurry and get finished. They used to tease me when I pastored. They said, he's like Pharaoh. He don't know when to let the people go. <laughs> but anyways, we're so glad to be here at Pentecostal Sister Myrna today. We always enjoy being in service with you. You're such great people. We love your spirit, your attitude, and the things that you bring here. Love your pastor and wife and family. Sorry they can't be here today, but uh, we understand that. We understand those things, but uh, God's here. Amen. And because he's here, anything can happen. And if the Lord doesn't change my mind toward the end of this service, I, I feel like that we probably need to gather in here today as families and pray. Pray together beginning this new year. Hopefully you've already done that. Some have done it. But I, 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 I spoke to my wife about it. I, I feel like we need to do this. And, and, and you know, I, years ago, I, you cannot believe we're doing these New Year's resolutions. I always thought that that was cheesy. But you know, the older you get, things change. Last year, my wife and I did it. We made a list of things to do. And our goal for the year 2016 is we wanted to read our Bible through a group together, not separate. So we sat down every morning this past year. We read our Bible. We finished it up every morning together. You say, Brother Hewlett, why are you saying that? I think that we need to do these things together as families. Set up some things. The Bible says two are better than one. It is. Help each other on this journey. I need my wife's help. I can't do this on my own. I can't. I don't even want to try to do it. But we're going to pray together this morning as families before we leave here. And the only hope that you've got, and I don't mean on me, but just that... Uh, Somehow that the hunger pangs have failed you and you get out of here and you're free. It's not the time to try to set it up. Let's get this together. The family wants to be in your presence today. Amen. If you have your Bibles and you want to turn with me to the book of Genesis, I want to direct your attention to a passage of Scripture. I realize I feel the Lord has spoke some things in my spirit and I feel like he's confirmed it uh, this morning. He put some things there and <clears throat> I mean really burned some things in my heart and I, I, I want to... Uh, I'm turning to Genesis chapter 37 today. I'm not going to preach a 
everybody quickly, Genesis 37, and we'll begin at verse 29. Uh, I, I feel like, and, and, and pardon me, I know that the adversary is defeated, but you know, sometimes we don't really understand things the way that we have to until we go through it. I, I don't mind telling you, I don't mind confessing to you that uh, there have been some very big things in my life this year that that I have expected to go through. The adversary has, can I say this, and then I'll take the question, has been a good devil. He does his job well. He does his job well. And with that being said, you know, we just need to understand the fact that he's got us here. So I'm going to read out of Genesis 37, and I want to begin at verse number 29. If you have your Bibles, you need to follow along. If not, you can follow where you're at. Out of Genesis chapter 37, and I'll begin, uh, let me begin at, uh, uh, I've got one verse here, but let me begin at uh, Genesis 37, verse 20. The Bible says, And Reuben returned unto the pit, and behold, Joseph was not in the pit. He rent his clothes. Verse 30 says, And he returned unto his brethren and said, The child is not, and I, whether shall I go? And they took Joseph's coat and killed, killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in the blood. And they sent the coat of many colors and, they, and brought it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it. And said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. Jacob rent his clothes, put sackcloth upon his loins, and mourned for his son many days. And all of his sons and all of his daughters noticed this very carefully. And the Bible says, Rose up to comfort him, but he refused to be comforted. And he said, for I will go down into the grave, and to my son mourn me. Thus his father wept again. This to me is a very sad story. Personally, this is very sad. Because when you begin to analyze this a little closer, you will find some things that we want to preach about today. And verse 35 says this. All of his sons and his daughters rose up to comfort him, but he re refused to be comforted. He said, I will go down into the grave and to my son mourn me. Thus his father wept. Notice back at verse 31. And they took Joseph and his coat. And the Bible says, and killed a kid of the goat and dipped the coat in the blood. Pay close attention. I want to preach for a while this morning. I want this to be on your mind. Grieving over a lie. I'm telling you, the Lord has spoke this into my spirit here for this service. I had some of the direction that I felt to go yesterday. And I even started studying and putting things down, but God brought this back to my attention yesterday as late yesterday morning. And I began to look at some things, and then this morning the Lord confirmed it to me. And maybe, maybe I'm just going to preach to me, and I will let you listen to me and come up here and tell me. Because I'm going to preach something into my soul to begin this new year. Turn to your neighbor and say, grieving over a lie. Let's lift our voices and our hands, and let's ask the Lord to help us today. Mighty God, we need your help in this house today. We feel your presence here already, mighty God. You have manifested yourself already to us. And we thank you, Lord God, for the privilege to be here today. We pray that your word would go forth today and prosper in the thing wherein to it is sent, mighty God. I pray that you help each one of us in here. I pray right now, Lord God, that you would break up the fallow ground in our hearts and our lives to hear and receive your word today. Mighty God, let us be encouraged before we leave here today in your word, knowing that you are for us, mighty God. In Jesus' name, and the church said, and in Jesus' name. You may be seated today in Jesus' name. Praise God. 
I would like for you to look with me at some verses of Scripture to get us here this morning on the same page. The Bible talks to us in John 8 and verse 44 and verse 45. This is an account here where Jesus and the Jews were kind of into a little confrontation and, and, and things. And, and through this confrontation, the Bible tells us here in John 8 and 44, He says to them, Ye are of your father the devil. And the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. Now to me that is a very powerful scripture. Because if you ever hear. Anybody tell a lie, and we probably have, if you've lived, you've been around folks that lie. And I will personally tell you, I just don't like a liar. Or lying. We're supposed to love liars, but boy, it's tough. When they look you in the eye and you know they are lying to you and still try their best to convince you that they're telling you the truth. When you know. And so... If you have ever heard someone tell a lie, think about this. The adversary fathered that. I want you to think about it. Because he is the father of lies. He gave birth to that. That came from him because there is no truth in him. And we really need to hear this today because... I believe with everything in me that there are those in this room today that would love to smile and you can't simply because the adversary has lied to you and told you you can't smile. There are those that would like to be happy in this room today, but you have deliberately made a choice not to be simply because the adversary has told you you can't smile. Uh, I'm just going to tell you this. Pardon me for being in here right now, but I hate the devil. I do. I had somebody one time tell me, said, be careful, don't talk like that. The elders don't do that. Now, I love my elders, and I would never rebuke an elder. You're not supposed to do that. But I had an elder, and he was one of my kinfolk. And that made it worse because, you know, you like to argue with your kinfolk. So I can talk about them, but you can't. But, and it was a spirit-filled, truth-believing person, and they said that to me, and I thought to myself, you know, really, a person that can say that and mean that, really, they probably hadn't been in a good fight with the adversary, or the adversary probably hadn't attacked their home, attacked their children, or attacked their grandchildren, because those kind of things happen. And when those things happen, let me just tell you straight up, there's a, there's a righteous indignation that comes over me that I absolutely hate. Everything the devil is trying to do to our families, to our churches, to our marriages. And if you don't believe it's real, you need to wake up. Because the adversary is trying to drive a wedge even between mothers and fathers and sons and daughters and mothers and children and fathers and children. In this hour, that's a biblical principle that he said in this hour that those things would happen. And so we don't need to be ignorant of the devil's devices in this hour. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's a liar. The truth this morning is, no matter how you look at it, the devil is a liar. Jesus himself tells us he's a liar. And the Bible also lets us know that Jesus tells the truth. Now, there's a scripture right there in verse 45. I didn't read it, but I've got it in my notes. And I want you to look at this. Everyone said the devil's a liar. Look what Jesus said here. He said, and because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. Now, I'm telling you, I, I feel the spirit telling me this right now. I feel like preaching. And in spite of the hunger, I feel like preaching. Now, Do you see this? The devil lies, and we believe him. Jesus tells us the truth, and we believe him. I have a problem with that. I 
have a big problem. You've taught about it for less than my spirit. My spirit mixes all these things up, and, and, and we're human. And we fight discouragement and depression and all kinds of things. And the adversary will jump up on our shoulder and whisper something in our ear. And can I tell you, there's a good way you can know when the adversary's lying. That's when his lips are moving. The Bible said there's no truth in him. And if something comes to you that's contrary to the word of God, you can rest assured that did not come from the Lord because he does not lie. The Bible says that it is impossible for him to lie. Yeah, I can't get off of it. It's impossible for for Jesus to lie. And it's impossible for the devil to tell the truth. There is no truth in him. So why don't you slap that person? Well, don't slap that person that's sitting next to you. We'll have a fight going in here we can't control. Why don't you nudge them lightly and tell them, why are you believing a lie? Huh? Come on, why are you believing a lie? Well, the Pentecostals of Smyrna can't grow. The Pentecostals of Smyrna can't have this. Why are we lending our ear to the adversary in this hour? We need to believe today that everything that the Lord said to us is true, that he will add to the church daily such as should be saved. Come on, somebody in the house. It's okay to say amen. And it might be okay once in a while if you're feeling tough to say amen. So the truth, Jesus is telling us the truth about the lie. He's been that, everyone say, from the beginning. Nothing's changed. He's a cheat. He's a deceiver. He's a liar. That's all he is. The devil does not want you and I to be saved. He wants you to believe that you have absolutely got two Now, let me get out and shout and jump and run and hoot and holler because somebody needs to hear the word of God. Because the adversary wants you and I to beat the people to the cross of Christ and tell them that they're not doing the things that they should be doing. Quit. Give up. Stop. You know why? Because the adversary, he knows what's in store for you and I. I don't really have time to go into a lot of things today, but there's a lot of people that just they they honestly believe that just because they're a believer, they're saved. Turn to your neighbor and say, the devil's a cheat. I believe that. He believes in one God and Trinity. Everyone say he's a believer. Everyone say he's oneness. You know what else he does? He's a churchgoer. Remember that in the synagogue when he went around, he cried out. Everyone say he's a churchgoer. Let's do a little Bible lesson, Sunday school. Everyone say he's a believer. Say he's one God. He's a churchgoer. Guess what else he does? He quotes the scripture. Remember when Jesus was in the desert and he came to Jesus and he said, it is written. Really, Lord? You're going to go quote the Bible? Are we here today? Everyone says he's a believer. Say he's a one God believer. Say he's a churchgoer. Scripture quoter. So if, if you're a churchgoer and you're a one God believer and you're a believer and you, you quote Scripture, we can't tell the difference between you and the devil. Amazing. Well, you know what I just was thinking about this one. But it's it's amazing that we that are God's children allow. I'm preaching to me right now because you know we get this little. So many times as Christians we put on our Christian glasses, and that's the only way we can see things. You know, we'll, we'll poke fun of other Christians, but we're just as bad as them. Because we're looking through, you know, we're looking through glasses as Pentecostals and Christians. The adversary doesn't want you to do that. Say it again. He's a believer. Say he's a one God believer. 
Maybe he's a scripture quoter, church goer. Why can't Christians be that way? We all are. The Bible says this. Till Christ be formed in you. And but 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 he's a he's an imposture. The adversary is an imposter. He's a liar. He's a thief. And he doesn't want you and I to be saved. And he will tell people sitting right here today, you've gone too far. You're too far down. You've went, you've, you've done too much. You you can't be saved, and you're you're way you're way way down there in the pit, and and you you just can't get out of that. Everyone say the devil said that. Here's what Isaiah fifty nine and verse one says. The devil don't want you to know. He don't want you to believe you can be saved. He says, but you're beyond the reach of God. Here it is. Look at this. Everyone say the truth says. For hold the Lord's hand is not short that it cannot save. Say it with me. He can reach you. Say he can reach you. You know, the adversary wants you and I to think that we've gone too far, that we're too far down. But can I tell you, we're not without, we're not beyond the reach of the Lord's arm. He can reach way down there to where you and I are at and pick us up and lift us up. And we're going to read this other scripture and lift us up out of the miry clay. Here it is. Psalm 40. I'm going to come back to that in a minute, probably. Psalm 40 and verse 1. The psalmist said, I waited patiently for the Lord, and he in, He inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. The adversary wants you and I to think we're beyond the reach of God. He can't help us. But can I tell you, he knows the pit that you and I are in. And his hand can reach you and I. And the adversary wants you to think there ain't no help for you. I, I, I'm telling you, he, he had put a new song. Everyone say a new song. In my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it in fear, shall not trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man. This is the scripture God gave me this morning. I read my Bible this morning, and this scripture blew me away this morning. Blew me away. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud. Look at that next part. But such as turn aside to lie. say blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust and respecteth not the proud such as turn aside don't believe the report of the devil the rep- he's saying you can't do it and you, the Lord doesn't I'm going to go back to that scripture the Lord doesn't even hear you when he pray when you pray the Bible said his arm is not short and his and, and his ear is not short. Everyone say check. Everyone say he can hear you. You see, some of you have prayed prayers for three weeks. You haven't even got your ear hurt. Be afraid. Be afraid. Because see, he doesn't hear you. Satan doesn't hear you. He tells us we can't overcome. Scripture back there, but First John four five five four. Listen to this. Listen to this. First John five four. See, the adversary wants to take you and I and 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 but First John five four. The Bible tells us whatsoever is born of God. There it is. Look at that. Overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
And if you get that, whatsoever is born, everyone say born of God. Anybody here born again? You see, if you're born of a woman, we're all born of a woman. Doesn't say that. We were born of a man first. Then we're all born of a woman. But that's where this born again thing is. It says, he that is born of God overcometh. There is something on the inside of you and I that's overcoming everything that comes against us. The adversary would say, you can't do it. You're a loser. You're a failure. But what he doesn't realize, I have been born of God, and what's inside of me overcomes the world and overcomes. Greater is he that is in you than he. The adversary would have you and I believe Losers, you know, that's why I don't watch the news and pay attention to it. Because I know I'm going to get hurt. I'm either a man or a woman. I've fallen out with that. I've fallen out of all of that teenage stuff. I walk around and do all these goofy things. And everyone say, you know, say, you know what Jesus, you know what he said about you and I? We are more. More than a conqueror. The adversary would say, you are a loser. Well, I got news for the loser today. I am more than a conqueror. I am more. You are more than a conqueror. I am not a loser. I serve the king that is alive forevermore. And because he is alive forevermore and he got up out of the grave, there is inside of me a spirit that he gave me. That is an overcoming spirit. Somebody needs to hear that today. Amen. I'm telling you what, I'm tired of that. I really am tired of that. Well, I'm not tired of that kind of thing. I'm tired of hearing all this junk and believing all this junk. Let's go back to Psalm 40 and verse 5. Look what it says. Many, O Lord my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to us. to us. They cannot be reckoned up among us to the Lord. If I would declare them that speak of them, notice what it says. Who is this that they speak of them? Who is this that speaks of them? Is that God? Look at what it says. They are more. That's what I'm saying. They are more than angels number. Hmm. Turn to your neighbor and say, you thinking about me? Now see, your neighbor might really get shocked and say, well, he sure can think about something better than they can. I can't think about nothing else. I, the Bible says we are the apple of his eye. See, the adversary, he is the biggest accuser. Let me tell you something. He is the biggest accuser. And the question is, when he comes to us, why are we believing that kind of junk? What kind of person could we be? Help us today to kick this new year off and kick this old devil out. How about that for an answer? I'm sick of the adversary lying to us and us picking up the book and saying, I don't believe in God. I don't believe in God. I want you to know you can have all the things through Christ that strengthen you. The adversary is such a liar that he doesn't know. You know what he's afraid of today? I, I thought about this as I as I prepared. Really afraid that when we leave here today, somebody in this room is going to have a heart attack. They really believe that he, that the adversary is real. Because if we come to that conclusion, this kingdom is real. I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to figure out where to put my put my hand on here, Lord. Let's see. doesn't know you, doesn't know anything about you, and that you're not worth anything. Let me just jump 
the scripture here. I'm going to jump Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5. And then I'm going to show you some other good things here. Let me jump there. Jeremiah, this is a cheap, the adversary wants you to think that God doesn't want you to know you, that, that you're not worth anything. But look what Jeremiah 1, verses 4 and 5 says here. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, this is Jeremiah. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before, <laughs> before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. Now, this would make some politicians jealous, wouldn't it? Especially the politicians that are against the Lord. Anybody ever seen that? Pretty good ones. So if you're one of the people that's going to support that baby, you might have just killed your own mother. One of the prophets that God had sent to you. But look what he said. Before I formed thee in the belly, he said, before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee. I didn't even know you, but I sanctified you. Why? Because I wanted you to know that I called you to be a prophet before you was even formed. I got to hear some things today thinking, I wish I never would have been able to hear that. Let me let me read something to you. I'm trying to hurry. Just bear with me. I'll hurry to get through something. But look what the Word of God. Let, let, let me just share. There's a, the Scripture talks about all the stars and things that, 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 that the Lord knows. And the Bible says He has them numbered and named. I went outside on a clear night about a year ago. I was, in, I was out and it was, we was out in the middle of absolutely nowhere. I don't even know if the Lord had had a guilt trip on him. Seriously. I mean, we was out in the middle of nowhere on a hayride, and, and Sarah dropped us off, and it, we were still in Michigan. I'm serious. I mean, I don't know how else to tell you, but it was pitch black. But I want to share with you, I was out there, and the Lord just spoke to me and said, you are not going to be able to hear the Lord in this room. I didn't see him until he had them numbered. Astronomers claim that there are over, listen to me, over 40 sextillion stars out there, which are suns to other people. God knows the exact number, for he made them. Now listen, just trying to, this is trying to put it in a little bit of perspective for you and me in our finite world. There are over 500,000 words in the unabridged dictionary. Now, according to Brain Geek, I don't know if you know this, but you've got to know this. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but the, 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 unab the Webster's Unabridged Dictionary, I put it together for you. I think it's page 1,500. 500,000 words in the Unabridged Dictionary. If God has every star named, there, there are enough such names to fill around 80 quadrillion books that big. Star doesn't mean it has a source. It's meaningless. And he's got them numbered. Everyone say amen. And the hairs on your head are numbered. And so you and I can be numbered and we can be numbered and we can have a guilt trip. And the things that we have done besides the Lord. Put your hand on your chest. Listen to me. I, I want you to listen. You can read this on the screen and follow with me if I'm not there. But looky here. It, this just so happens that you're here today and you feel so insignificant and you feel like that, that nobody knows you, the Lord forgot about you, and that you're an outcast and you're no, no good for nothing and you're a loser. Notice what the psalmist said. The 
psalmist said this, the Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Everyone say he knows me. Look what he says here. Look at this. Isn't this a good picture of Sabbath? You want to meet dinner. I don't think I did that good. But look at what he says. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine upright. Can I put it in a Henry Tommy picture? You know what this psalmist is saying? Thou knowest my upset and down sitting. Thou understandest my thought afar off. See, here's that great nation. You don't need to know me. He doesn't need to know you. These two verses right here have already knocked the thunder out of the water. Next verse. Thou compassest my path. He's got my, he's got my, where I'm walking surrounded and I'm surrounded. And he goes, where I lay down and die, mid day or mid night. Everyone say, he's got me covered all the way. And art acquainted with some of my sins. Just my good days. Just my bad days. Well, isn't that something? Everyone say, all of it. He's acquainted with every one of us. You and I are not supposed to have every sin in the world. You don't have to believe every sin in the world. You're not going to believe probably every sin in the world. Right? Turn to your neighbor and say, you know what Mr. Brown said? He's acquainted with all of us. You don't believe the truth in any of it. Don't believe what the world says. There is... There is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest all my ways. Everything that I say, everything that you've said, he knows it prayer, but you're not going to believe what I just said. Yes, I am. He knows it all. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. I was, I, I had your back. I had your back in prison. I had your back when you were sick. I, I, I had you. Coming, a change is coming. The psalmist here is here to give us a little bit more information. And he said here in verse, actually, I think I might read it out of the NIV. This psalm says here, Thou hast been my help. Thou hast beset me in the way. See, there's times in Thomas and I go, I don't know what I'm doing. Can I tell you what I know? I feel the help of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I feel the help of my Holy Ghost right now. I feel the help of my Holy Ghost. There was a hand that was upon me. And there was somebody that was bridging that gap. You know, what they, you know what the Word of God calls that? The mediator. Right there. Everyone say the mediator. He 
He said, thou hast forsaken me behind and before and laid thy hand on me. See, you think you're healed by asking, but you're really healed by asking because God led you. said to Solomon, he said, but God is the wonderful God. Oh, the power of God came on him. Whither shall I go from thy, from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend into heaven, thou art there. But if I bear to hell, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning, dwell in the othermost parts of the sea, even in there thou, thou, shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. Verse 11 is another great verse of Scripture. If I say, surely, that was Psalm 37, verse 1, if you read it, you'll know what verse that is. Surely, the darkness shall cover it. Even the night shall be light about it. The psalmist said, yea, the darkness shall cover it, but the light shall be light about it. Look what the psalmist said. Because the darkness and the light are both. You see, I can't get them out. But the Lord said, no, I can get them out. I can get them out. I can call them before me. Darkness is upon the face of the deep. And he began to speak and things. And can I tell you, we're people. Everyone say, we're people. Say, the darkness and light. dark times, don't worry about it. Just keep your hand on the Lord. He'll get you through the bad times. Yes, we are dark. But he's come to families and he's come to people in this room. And he's come to people that need healing. What are we going to do? Should I dare go to my Aunt Debbie or my father-in-law? Jesus is the father. He's the father of truth. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say that. Who you going to believe? Who you going to believe? Who you going to believe? Now, I have to tell you, when that came to me, I said, Lord, why are you allowing me to go through this? <laughs> now, I want to tell you, we're going to pray in a minute. But I want to, I, I feel strongly in the Holy Spirit that we need to tear up this church. You know, if you don't have family here, you need to, you need to have family, okay? So you you have family. But if you've got husband and wife, children, grandchildren, whatever, if you've got, I want you to kind of just make your way just front, and we're going to close this service out this morning with some prayer, with some, with some prayer. Beginning this new year. It's time. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say, it's time to stop listening to the liar. I can't be anything for that. I can't do that. Pastor can't. Come on, somebody. The, ad the adversary is telling us that because he knows there's something good in store. Come on, let's gather in. Let's just line up across the front. Now, I'm telling you, I know you don't have to act like that you're a part. You, come on, just let all these, let's, we're going we're to gather in here. Let's let everybody gather. We're not going to, we're not going to pull out a snakes out of the box or any of that kind of junk. Come on. But I, I feel strongly in the Holy Ghost place. Gather on in. Push her across the front. Make two lines across the front if you have to. Come on. I see. Come on down. Let's get a good. Hey, come on, kids. Let's just come on across the front. 